You know, a lot of times um, we talk about tenon saws and of course the tenon saw was created to, to cut tenons. Uh, it cuts in a straight line, but 90% um, of my tenons I actually split. And depending on the wood, I look at the grain and I try to determine which way the grain is oriented before I split. So I've got three different woods here. Sapili is notoriously bad for splitting. It has very undulating grain within its structure. Pine, of course, is usually easy, depends on whether there's a knot in there. An oak splits very easily, and that's, I've just made an, uh, an oak chest, and uh, I used a splitting technique on most of mine. I want to show you what I look for when I'm splitting. When I'm splitting, I start away from my line, usually about halfway, and I pop. You can see how that grain is splitting away from the line here. So I'm going over to this side now, and that one is actually splitting straight. So that means I can split right up to my line, probably. So I'm going to go right onto my gauge line and I'm going to partially split like that and you can see that grain is splitting away. Now I'm going to turn this around so the camera can see it. On this side let's see what happens over a three inch width. So I go in here right onto my gauge line like this and watch here this side is splitting exactly to my line. So I, c I know that somewhere in the middle this is likely to change. Back to this side. And now I'm going to take that mid section. So I'm going to take the whole of this outside section off so I can look into my grain. There you go. So I can go directly on here. Split. Split. And I can take that off completely. Now I could either continue splitting down here like this, or I could go into my vise like this, and using the double handed method like this, I go straight onto the gauge line on this side, into that gauge line, and then with the heel of my hand, I just pop it so I've got a nice flat start. And then two-handed, I pair away at the face of my tenon. The other side, if you remember, was rising up a little bit. So I'm going to, how can I do that so you can see? I'll stay on there, I can work this way. Start from the outside. When you get a little bit of resistance, just start on the outside like this and move over to the right. And that's how you split your tenon. It's much faster. Now, obviously, if you remember, before one side of this split straight, the other didn't, you go to the other side of your tenon, pop it. That's working parallel. Now, on this side, if you remember, it was leaning out this way. So if I was to split again, this could lean into the face of the tenon. I'm hoping it will, so you can see what I mean. See, it's moving slightly in towards my tenon. So I'm a, mit, a little bit more reluctant. So I'm going to split this side here. And I think you'll be able to see here. This is fairly parallel to the surface. So I can actually split all the way down this one without going into the face of the tenon. This one I can't do. I can't do all of it, but I can start away from it just a sixteenth because I can gauge the grain orientation. Took out some of that waste wood, as you can see there. So to gain the same level, I go right in onto this here. Split and split and just use the heel of my hand just to take off the bulk of the waste and now I can pair the whole of this face all the way across just to take off 
the high spots. And that's how you would split an oak tenon to near perfection there. All right, so that's an oak tenon. Let's see what happens with the pine. Again, I do exactly the same technique. Split and watch my direction. Split. Now this one went towards my shoulder, as you can see. So that gives me a signal. Now on this side, let's see what happens on this side. It's moving away. This side is parallel. So I've got the same situation I had with the oak. So I can split all the way down on this one, but I, I, and I can do it on this one. Watch this now. Let me take that middle bit out a little. Just get rid of some of the waste. Now go on here, and instead of allowing the wood just to split like this, keep control of your chisel with your left hand and chop to your gauge line. Then overlap your chisel on the cut you just made. Control your chisel and go down to your line. So you've got one side almost completed. Then you can pair cut the surface of this. You can see this is, you know, in oak and pine, it was very comparable. It was no harder in oak than it is in this pine. So now then, let's see what happens on this side. You can see this was cutting towards that line. So I'm reading the grain, which is so critical for us woodworkers. Get rid of that extra waste. In on your line, in on your line, and be prepared for this last bit because you're going to have to pair across because you can't split cut. So you come in here on the low spot and move towards the high spot by pairing just hand pressure like this. And that's how I cut 90% of my tenons. Now I picked a piece of, I picked a piece of uh, sapili because this is notorious. This, this may not do what I want it to do. Let's take a look. It's not a guarantee. I'm going to split again. I'm coming away from my line half the distance. <laughs> it's doing exactly what I didn't want it to do. This is splitting towards the line again here. Watch this. So it's actually going within the parameters because I started away, which is great. So let's see what happens in the middle. So there is the, the uneven surface. I can't get exactly what I wanted there. A lot more resistance here, tons more re resistance to my chisel. But this double-handed method like this, gripping your chisel, and short stabbing movements. Now I get resistance when I get resistance, I just start over on one side and use half the width chisel width and I move over like this. Try not to just burst through here, just come in here. And you'll get a clean tenon cheek. One last method that I want to show you, if you have got wiry grain, let's say this is very wiry. Just take the heel of your hand, go halfway down, one eighth from the top, in the, and pop it with the heel of your hand. If you, if you are not used to this, just go in with this, with the, chi with the chisel hammer, and go across this way. I'm going to continue with my heel of my hand method because it, it works well for me. Now watch here, instead of sewing, I'm going to chisel. I'm going to go down to my registration line. Here I go very carefully, go on the outside, like that, and just keep working down that surface now. Cross here. Oh, 
and tip. Normally, I would work from both sides. So down a little bit more. Here you can see a lot of resistance, so come out. So I lower the point of my chisel down to my surface and then it's just clean up after that. Now I'm getting down to your final depth like this and if you're uncertain and you don't want to burst all the way through you could work from the other side. Mine did just fine so I've got a, a perfectly flush tenon and I'm ready to fit that to the mortise holes. That's how I split my tenons accurately to get the exact size I want.